everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is the Spanish guy that tries to draw James Cork, and with me I have the podcasting machine and planes walker extraordinaire Norman Sanso. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. You see that I didn't say fantastic singer in those titles, that's because he isn't. And also we have with us the man, the myth, the hippogriff, the awesome Ronnie reviewer, Silver Quill. Pursuant to all PC culture, I wish you all a happy holiday. Please do not sue me. I make no references to individuality. Then Tumblr gets all triggered. We are not about the individuals, it's about the group. You see scandal! Alright, you know what? Nuts to all of you, it's Merry Christmas. <laughs> What about the others? Because what about I, Hanukkah? Hanukkah? Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, but above all else, I wish you good cheer. And oh, you're humbug. still offended. You're still offended. Why? Why? Uh, Nobody uh, cares about Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we are in the season to be jolly, happy, generous. It's Christmas time, everyone. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, then happy holidays. And if you have a, a problem with happy holidays, just refer to the, um, the video game nerd video on Winter Games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But today, uh, it's not just Christmas, Christmas is also Hearts Warming Eve, at least for the denizens of Equestria, as we are going to be talking about episode 20 of season 5, overall episode 100 and 11, titled Hearth Breakers, written by Nick Confalone. And as always, I'm going to read directly from the blurb on the wiki, because I don't know how to words. So in this episode, the Apple family witnesses a different kind of Hearth's Warming Eve with the Pie family. So as you can tell from that blurb, it's all about the Apple family interacting with Pinky's family, which we haven't seen since season one. So this episode was already kind of a big deal, uh, like connected not just with the previous seasons, but with the books that were written about uh, her family. And I want to give uh, to give this one, guys, right straight to you. So... Uh, First impressions, thoughts, uh, and all, as always, inverted alphabetical order. So, uh, Silver, what did you make of this episode? Well, I greatly enjoyed it. Uh, we we did have them, the families, act, interacting just a little when Maud came to visit. So, getting to have the return of Maud Pie is always a welcome treat. I will say, it's funny, uh, there's just so much in this that I actually wanted to see when Pinky... Apple Pie came out, I actually said, I wonder what it'd be like for Applejack to meet uh, Pinky's more down-to-earth parents. Well, there you go. So we get to witness that. We get to see Big Macintosh taking an interest in the opposite sex. Air, <laughs> my God. More on that later. We get to see two families and the way they celebrate and then finding the compromise. Uh, I will say that I criticize that the episode tries to project, uh, portray Applejack as being in the wrong. And while she commits a party foul, it's not really on her specifically. The the Pie family is being even more inflexible, much like the rocks they quarry. There's almost like a theme going on on that one. More to talk about in detail, but that's my initial thoughts. <laughs> it's uh, it's also a pretty special episode for you, isn't it? Because you watched that episode while, uh, while uh, at a convention, right? Yes, Nightmare Nights was going on. They oh. aired the Christmas episode in October. <laughs> and they leaked the, and they leaked the October episode early. It's a madhouse, I tell you. A madhouse. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. It's uh, that's that's the problem with TV Arians. I'm more interested in hearing the whole story about that uh impromptu review of first impressions at Nightmare Nights. How did it start? That? Like what's the whole idea behind that one? Oh, doc, Dr. Wolf is always a, a connector. He loves to get folks together. So he suggested that uh, we all do a reaction video having seen it. Now, the funny thing is, at conventions, you find out who you te- what circles you tend to move with. Lightning Bliss, Dr. Wolf, Tarek, and myself are all older fans, more quiet. So we kind of gravitated towards one another. And we all got together. I had a, a hotel room. And a computer, so we all hooked up, uh, watched the episode, and then just turned on the TV and uh, uh, turned on the camcorder, rather, and started recording our spiel. Hmm, that's about it? Yeah, it was just, it was genuinely just initial impressions. But we, because we'd been hanging out during the convention and chatting with one another, we uh, we knew how to play off one another pretty well. 
Oh, that sounds fun. I wish I could do that with you guys. That there I will, wish there will we could come do a time. These days. Uh, everything, every, everything, can, everything can happen. Uh, well, back to the episode. What did you think about it, Norman? What were your first your your thoughts on it? I'm confused now between how holidays work in Equestria. Uh, no, but honestly speaking, the whole spiel of this episode and how it came out and how it, I don't know, to me, what got me first was, okay, you pull out the Halloween episode early and then the Christmas episode in October, like, what? But okay, derping aside, that's besides the point, episode's not bad. I like the whole holiday team. We see, we get to see more of the town in its Christmassy feel. Even though not that long, but we still get to see how Christmassy everything is, especially the starting scene where we get to see the castle in its whole Christmasly glory. That was fun, and <laughs> we get to see um, traditions being made and traditions being altered and whatnot. And honestly speaking, this is an episode where it's all about tradition and how you deal with it or how one uh, celebrates it. Pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> It it definitely has a lot of atmosphere going for it. It's very very Christmassy, more than the than the than the previous uh, heartwarming episode that we had, which was simply a pageant. Hey, this one's nice too. At least we get to know the backstory of what is heartwarming. Be nice to each other, or we'll all die. Oh yeah, honestly, <laughs> that that one had a lot of mythology, but it didn't have a lot of like interaction between families. No, no, you have to remember, like, they're setting up things, like, they're setting up the holiday. It's like, when you read a scripture, it tells the whole story of what happened here and what happened then. Then you get to appreciate the uh, scripture. <laughs> I'm trying to be PC right now. <laughs> you're, you're being very PC right now. Let's not trigger anybody else's with their, with their uh, festivities. Uh -huh. mm. I don't need anyone calling PC principal on us. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. We don't need that. I love the fact that the episode is so well focused on just let let's talk about let let's let's see what is like uh, the apple family and the pie family hanging out together and that's about it and it's so entertaining it's very much like those national uh, national lampoons uh, uh, christmas uh, uh, movies like you know the ones starring Chevy Chase where you have or like any movie on that uh uh on that genre, which is the family coming together for Christmas, and you see the interaction between each one of the mem uh, between each member and all that, and it's really interesting how well they combine, and I find it kind of refreshing that Applejack is actually one of the the sources of conflict that happens in the episode. It is true what you say, Silver, is that the, the uh, writing tries to point Applejack as the one in the wrong, while the Apple family, the Pie family, is also kind of like. A bit not open-minded about it, and it's not until the situation explodes that they all come to a middle ground. So, yeah, I I I, I find this episode really really nice, really enjoyable. I hate saying nice, but it is it is very relaxing to watch it. And the the good thing is that you can watch this out outside of the Christmas season, because it's not Christmas; it's heartwarming here. So you don't need to be in Christmas to watch it. True. True. Yeah, so yeah, I really liked it. I don't know if I'll put it on my top five or my top ten of the season, but I very much enjoyed it. Okay, so let's let's talk about the episode. We start with uh, we start in Ponyville of all places, where Applejack and Pinkie Pie are going to Twilight's uh, Twilight's uh, castle to tell her that they're going to be hanging out together. And in there, Twilight is telling Applejack that they have a different way of celebrating heartwarming it. That instead of waiting to open the presents. Uh, to the day after, they open the presents the night before. And that's, that's already setting the tone for the rest of the episode, how it's going to be. It's like, uh, and Applejack is like, but that's not how traditions are. And Apple, and Twilight is like, well, that's what we do in our house. That's how we celebrate Heartswarming If It's our, uh, particular way of celebrating it. And Spike gets to open his present. And what is it? <laughs> uh yes. For shy doing. Uh, oh, Twilight did not I learn have... her lesson from Spike's birthday. Uh well it could <laughs> be a good book. I love the fact that it's such a a, a punchline coming from like two uh, three seasons. It's like finally Twilight gives Spike that book that she couldn't give him like three seasons ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, if you say it that way, that makes it even more funny. 
Uh, but I, I do love set up here. For shadowing, it's like we get to see other people with how they celebrate um, Christmas and whatnot. Oh, sorry, uh, with how they celebrate heart swimming and whatnot. And it says a lot because each family has different traditions. Each family eats different things and stuff. And the Sparkle family, they like to open presents first before waiting for the day off. And if I do understand right, some people open the presents on the 26th instead of the 25th. So, yeah. Yeah, I yes, am very much like Paulette's family. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that is that what you call Boxing Day? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, actually, uh, well, okay, so you go first. Well, it's a, it's a English United Kingdom uh, tradition as far as I know. Here in America, we are greedy and impatient. <laughs> that, that is all I have to say. If I do understand right, like Boxing Day for you guys is the day that you throw all the boxes outside. You know, I've never been entirely unclear. Again, it's more a United Kingdom day. I'm not really sure what the traditions are. Eh, maybe someone in the comments who live in the UK could tell us. Probably. <laughs> you could let us know down here in the comments. Yeah. Uh, of course. You, you can share the way that you celebrate uh, Christmas or your your holidays down there in the comments. We're, we will very much want to hear what you guys have to say. But yeah, I like that how they set this up and it's very subtle how it goes. Then uh, move to the... What what, what else? It's the Exposition Express! <laughs> oh, uh, nice. What do we have to do in the Exposition Express? Exposition. Let's let's tell the story of Hearts Warming Eve to those who didn't watch the Hearts Warming Eve episode. And if you didn't, shame on you. <laughs> uh, I love this art style. It's very, it's very Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like, yeah, I like that. It's, uh, it also shows how this TV show is very self-contained. It all happens within itself. So, uh, you don't need to watch the Hearts Warming If episode to understand the Hearts Warming If story because they're telling it to you right here. <laughs> In a more compressed, uh, toned down way and with more candy cane and cuteness inside. And everyone's an alicorn. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everyone. Well, no, not... Mm, wait, really? Of, most of them. Like not those really. Gingerbread the, cookies. The gingerbread cookies, the, the outer ear looks like a horn, so yeah. everyone becomes a, a unicorn, and if you're a unicorn, you become a bicorn, <laughs> and and if you're a pegasus, you become an alicorn. <laughs> So you mean Earth ponies? They always get shortchanged. Oh, uh-huh. it's We're... it's either that or the face is actually pointing towards us, and they are just cyclop ponies, and they have just <laughs> one giant eye in the middle of their face. Oh God, uh, no! Ah, he returns from season one. <laughs> he has been long denied, but now he makes his triumphant return. The cyclops. Oh uh, wow! No. <laughs> ah no! I only go like that when I have a wrong a wrong rarity. I get nervous, <laughs> and my two eyes combine into one. So, after that brief introduction of how Hearts Moving Eve goes, we have the whole um, Pinkie Pie, Applejack um, talk-off. I, I don't know what you call it, but they kind of talk like one of the same, like they're a legion or something like that. They are a hive mind. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, you got that. And, well, um, Applejack is hyping herself up here, like, she says um, they do almost everything the same, like how heartwarming is in her family. And Pinkie Pie says, hey, we do that too. And we might be related. Yay. Continuity. Yay. <laughs> but it does bring up the question, are they related now? Well, ever since that episode, that Pinky Apple Pie episode, there's always been that doubt. Saying that uh, Uncle, or what's, uh, what's her name? Aunt? Goldie Delicious? It was Goldie Delicious, right? Mm. Cousin of Goldie Delicious. That she might be the link that joins the apple family with the pie family? Probably. Yeah, because she eats gingerbread houses and she stacks things really high and the the towers, they never get knocked off. So people made that connection that... She's a Jenga master. Oh, wow. (laughs) Just Uh. like Pinky. (laughs) Yeah, but so... Um, if they're related or not, we'll probably see that in season six. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, they arrive at the rock farm. I don't know how you do that. Like, they have a dedicated rock farm. How? Well, how indeed? Well, basically, in the time when the British were uh, on the ascent, they discovered their love for rock and roll. So they devoted a farm to it. And the meaning kind of got lost over time. You know how it goes with traditions. I'm totally making this out of thin air. 
there is a theory going about around saying that the rocks they are farming they open up later to harvest the to harvest the jewels that are inside. Like you remember the story of how Rarity found her talent by the rock that is split in half and it was like a geode. So people are saying that the rocks that are farmed in the rock farm are like that. Which is why Tri- Trixie got such a great pay coming out of that. Oh wow! But still, but still, like I think the Pi family has the monopoly on uh, rock farms, and so yay, um, they're rich, I guess. So once they arrive, Mod Pi comes and greets them, and she and her awesome detective skill deduce that that Applejack was sledding. And how does she know this? By the dirt on her hoof. Uh, speaking of Even hooves, you haven't mentioned the 19 hooves that oh, Pinkie Pie has. Uh, that, that girl Sprout Slims has needed. Yeah, you remember that episode, that one with the, I think in season 2, was it? Where she popped up fingers? No, that was season 3. <laughs> yeah, okay, season 3. A friend indeed. I think that was season 2. A friend indeed did have that moment where she had like 7 hooves or something like that. And in uh, Too Many Pinkie Pies, she blew on, on her hoof and... Like fingers sprout, sprouted out of the other hoof. Pinkie Pie is not bounded by the rules of reality. She breaks physics, even in a world that where physics are already questionable. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's like Alucard. She knows to have abandoned her physical form long ago. <laughs> uh, but anyway. You are all picturing Pinkie Pie cosplay as Alucard right now. I know how your minds work. Uh, anyway, Silva, why did I pass this on to you? Pinkie Card. So we arrive at the Apple family, uh, sorry, the Pie family farm, the Rock Farm, where we get some, a return to the classical, slightly Amish-ish, uh, approach. Slightly so, right? Amish? Dude, they're totally Amish. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. They don't seem to shun, uh, too much technology. Otherwise, they'd be very mad at Pinky. What is this blasphemy you have brought upon our abode? It's my party cannon! <laughs> Oh god. Yeah. So I it's it's it is actually pretty fine that they portray them as being very serious but not rude or like uh impolite. They are just very uh traditionalist. Traditional. Well, yes, that's the word. Traditional. Well, one is rude and borderline psychotic. <laughs> limestone pie. <laughs> this L- lady L- is a psychopath. Her hostility. May, may we say, limestone pie, marble pie, and mud pie are all voiced by the same actress. Oh yeah, I forgot to yeah, I forgot to mention that. But yeah, the same person. Like, oh gosh, the range on. Mm. Yeah, she does have a fantastic uh, range, portraying several characters. One so monotone, but so delightful. One psychotic, and one hardly even speaks. Yeah, I, I know. Here's the thing, like, with, uh, limestone, is it? The shy one's limestone, right? Yep. Alright. Oh, no, 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 the hostile one is limestone, the shy one is marble. With marble, yes. she's, okay, you can say that, oh, doing marble's easy, you just go, mm-hmm, and there, you got marble. But you, with limestone, there, yeah, she's hardcore, you're like, oh, you gotta have to go angry all over the place. So you can just imagine how, uh, I'm forgetting the voice actress's name, uh, who was it again? I'm looking into it. All right, but her range of monotone, doing almost no emotions, to very angry and to being very timid and shy is there. Like, wow, she does a great job. The voice of the three sisters is Ingrid Nielsen. Oh, yeah, Ingrid Nielsen. She does a great job. And we also find out about the, what did they call it, the founding boulder? No, oh, it was yeah, more... Yeah, Holder's more, boulder. Thank you. It was more illiterate than that. <laughs> uh, so it, it, everyone has commented it looks like a dragon egg. Uh-huh. It's it's huge. It's egg shaped. I fully expected by the end that it would hatch. Actually, maybe, maybe <laughs> that's one where day, the conflict is. Maybe one day it will, and they'll be like the mother of all gemstones inside. Oh wow! <laughs> or the mother of all dragons. <laughs> oh no! It, it hatched, son. From there it comes Amelia Clark. No. Um, <laughs> thing is that uh, they do mention uh, towards the end of the episode that the boulder was found in a dragon's nest by uh, by a uh, uh, holder pie, and that's why it's called Holder's Boulder. I bet he liked to carry stuff. 
Yeah. He had to be huge or super strong to carry that. Well, he, he was a descendant of of Maud. Oh, no, an ancestor to Maud. So, mm-hmm. And based on what we'll see later, maybe even Pinky's got that uh, rock-crushing power going on. Mm. Wow, well, yeah. We'll see if that for later. Like, that, that's just whole spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the rock-punching power. Mm-hmm. But, but, but actually, yeah. the, the, the pie family dinner... Yeah, actually, really, in a family that eats rocks for dinner, literally, uh, I'm starting to think the entire Pie family is just super strong hulks, and Peaky's just exceptionally gentle. Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Okay, there's a saying in my country where um, I'm okay to eat anything except uh, sticks and rocks. This is just, what? Well, they didn't have sticks. Every family's got their limits. Yeah, but still, rocks, like... I don't know. I'm broken here. <laughs> it's only more more soul crushing because the entire fa- Apple family were like getting happy and everything. Oh, we're gonna have all of this delicious food. Rock soup. Yeah, I mean, okay. Here, here's the part where I can totally understand Applejack's feeling here. Like, this is similar to what? Well, this is a scenario where it's similar to what we might have experienced. Like. Have you ever went to a friend's house or another family's house to celebrate uh ex holiday and you're expecting something to be well something to be the same, like uh probably you have turkey, potato salad or whatever else you have on the holidays, but getting totally something different? Like getting fried turkey, like mm. It happened to me. It happened to me. Everybody's got their own stuff. Yeah, true, true. Every family got their own traditions and whatnot, but it is just, oh my god, it's strange to experience it. This is more culture shock than, than anything else. If, uh, if we could call it, uh, culture shock, it's well, like tradition, uh, well, it shock. Well, kind of is when you want to say culture shock, because I remember what I mentioned way back when in the Yak episode, what was it again? Oh boy. Uh, uh, it was party poop. poop. Yeah, in party poop where I said that the yaks were. I I had a brief explanation about how they felt like tradition, blah blah blah, and whatnot carry over here. But instead of being angry, just being like awkwardly disappointed. <laughs> Look, I, I will maintain the yaks are just jerk, jerks. Oh, they are jerks. They are jerks. I got. Can you People... imagine the yaks coming here to this farm to celebrate hearts? <laughs> Oh no, that, that's on their part. They were not invited. So they came on their own volition and, okay, you accepted your fate. No, I was, I wanted to, I would want to see that now. I'd like to see them try and knock over Holder's Boulder. Limestone would end them. Oh, they could. <laughs> and yeah, Limestone would end them. This boulder not brown! Jacks destroy! No! <laughs> but it doesn't make sense for them to go aggro on that. No, it makes sense, no. Yaks pray for sweet release of death. <laughs> uh, so after a disappointing <laughs> dinner, what do we have? We have doll making. Oh, yay! I like to make dolls. Good for you. This one is nice, though. This one is fine. But after they carve them from rocks. <laughs> they are all rocks. But honestly speaking, like, yeah, I- I'm neutral with this one because it's... Family tradition, again, instead of making dolls out of yarn or... What did they say they make it of? I can't quite recall the material. I'm assuming it's thread and... Um, fab- yeah, something yeah, that's more like traditional. Felt or something, like, yeah. so, something like felt or like... Uh, they, they look like ractals. Very yeah. cute, adorable ractals, actually. But mm. I actually think that these dolls are uh, better... I don't know. I like the I like the silhouette style that they have, and they are made out of rock. You know, they are never going to break. And I love that limestone is making just that. She's hardcore. She's not making a teeny tiny one. She's making a huge one. Yeah, she she's making like a one one scale. Yeah, so it's tradition. It's family tradition and whatnot. And we get to see the apple. Well, most of the apple partake in set tradition. And yeah, they're awkward at first. Not a very good job, buddy. They're what? Who me? No, that, like they are, uh, they are awkward. Uh, they they are uh, awkward about it. They're trying, but <laughs> they're failing miserably at it. Big Mac breaks the pike on the rock. How do you do that? With a lot <laughs> of Mac, power. Gentle, <laughs> gentle, <Yeah>. please. <laughs> but we come to Applejack's, uh, what you call this doll, and oh my god, it's frowny. 
It's it's gleep and gloop from the Herculoids. <laughs> oh, blah, 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 blah. It's Slimer from Ghostbusters. I have to mention something here. An artist on the internet called Pixel Kitty, she just loved this. Like, she made a whole edit out of that rock. Anything involving Applejack is just that rock now. The, the rock has supplanted Applejack. Can I make a dirty joke? Mm, depends. We might get bleeped by Sweetie Boy. <laughs> should we talk about, should we talk about, uh, should we talk about Marble Pie blushing while she's holding the shaft with her mouth? Uh, I had not interpreted it that way. Probably. Uh, <laughs> okay, moving on to the next scene. Uh, well, actually, it is, the next scene is Marvel. We, you know, we kind of skipped Marvel when we talked about her. Pinkie Pie's twin sister. Oh yeah, we forget to mention that. Yeah, twin by That homie. is just like, that is one second younger than he, than she is. Okay. Or thereabouts. Okay, well, if it's only one second, then I'm sorry. Mother Pie was uh really a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> no, fastest birth in history. <laughs> I mean, man, the, the pies do not mess around. Mother, we have oh to rotate gosh. the stones in ten minutes. Could you speed this up? <laughs> Uh, it is, it, 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 it is, however, not uh, so odd because we know that Mrs. Cake had two babies at the same time. Uh, do horses are horses capable of having like more than one foal at the it's, same time? It's rare. I, it's very rare. I think that it's usually just one at a time. But yeah, it's one at a time when they deli- with any creature. It's one at a time. Come on. Let's see here. Quick internet. Save me, Google. Oh, Make me God. look smart. While you do that, <laughs> I'll talk about the next scene. So the next scene is the flag finding mission. So I'm I'm a bit blurry. They are this. looking for the flag. No, yeah. no, they're not just looking for a flag. They are looking for a rock to put on top of the boulder. Mm. So they are. The Pinkie Pie divides them in pairs, and she puts Big Mac with Marvel, yeah. Maud with Apple Bloom, and uh, her her parents with Granny Smith. And I love that she calls them Team Old. <laughs> Think old. Mm. And limestone, she wisely keeps as the timer away from any social activity. But, <laughs> so but like, don't stay with them. But let's let's deal with the big impact of this uh, episode. The minute Big Mac and Marple are paired together, what do they start doing? Mm-hmm. Blushing furiously. Yep. <laughs> Oh god, like, ah, okay, okay, I just need to bring something up here, I just need to bring something up here, like, guys. Really, really, go ahead. Okay, it's cute that they're shipped, but what if they're related? Then, okay, I, no. I've been meaning to say this for a while. Recall, reach back to Pinky Apple Pie. Recall how far down the scroll Pinky had to go. Uh-huh. They're, if they are related, the genetic is generation upon generation old. They're not going to give birth to, like, five-hooved offspring, if that's what it comes to. Okay, still, but still. However, but, I have to say, like, paraphrasing Steven Universe right now, everyone that is a Flutter Muck fan, they're like, Oh, no! Our ship! Well, actually, I'm a Flutter Mac fan, and uh, i got to be honest, I've always just liked... The gentle giant falling in love with the gentle and shy pony. What do we have here? Gentle and shy. The gentle giant attracted to the shy pony. She is kind of flutter shy to the extreme. Uh. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but out of, out of the both, which one do you, which one do you think is, uh, the best? But, well, I'll always be, I'll always be Pers- I'll always be partial to Fluttershy and Big Macintosh. They are both characters I really enjoy. Marble is unfortunately just late to the party. She's really making up for it really fast. Like the amount oh, of, yeah. of, of Marble Mac artwork that is out there is just unbelievable. Yeah. Not to speak about the fanfics that I'm pretty sure are in the works. I don't know. <laughs> uh, as for fanfics, I haven't seen much. But you know what's a strange combo I've seen on Finfic? What? Luna Mac. Oh yeah, inspired by the mm-hmm. comics. And not just by the comics, there was also a bit of Luna Mac in that, uh, in that one fanfic that appeared in the beginning of the fandom. The one where Luna has an abacus. I completely forgot the name of it, but yeah. Uh, Luna versus, I think. Luna Mac in, 
Luna versus yeah, Luna Progress. Progress was the name of the fanfic. There you go. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, shipping aside, um, well, no, actually, actually, I want to I want to ride this ship for a while. Okay, why? because yes, yes, please. I want to throw out a question here. How is this any different from Twilight and Flash Century? You introduce a new character. They both look and blush at each other. They're really shy. One ship has brought the fandom to fury and been very divisive. Another ship is almost instantly accepted. What's the real difference? I know, I know. Can I say, teacher, please? Can I, can I, can I? Yeah, yes, yes, the fellow in the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you, it's because with Big Mac in touch, that is, we, we have seen Big Mac from the beginning of the show, but just by amount of scenes that he has had, there is not enough development for Big Mac as there was for Twilight Sparkle. And for Big Mac is like, okay, most of what we think of the guy for the longest has been headcanon or interpretations that we make from either the TV show or the comic. And the official, uh, the official release hasn't given us too much to work with or, uh, many concrete stuff about his, uh, how he is, how he thinks or what he feels. So, uh, shipping him with somebody, even if it's just indirectly, might always be more open-ended than taking the main character of the show, that is Twilight, and not only just change, uh, change her species going from unicorn to alicorn, but a few weeks later, like literally weeks later, we go and give her a love interest. So not only are people angry and sore about uh, giving Twilight wings, but now they are doing this. So there is like two changes, very radical, in a very short amount of time. So I think why people hate Flash Sentry and Twilight Sparkle being shipped is that one, it's clear and official, and two, it happened way too shortly after giving her wings, which threw the fandom into a massive tantrum that it's still going even to this day. So I think that's why people hate Flash Sentry and Twilight so much, and that's why people accept Big Mac and anything else uh, uh, so much. Also, maybe it's because this fandom has a, a good amount of introverts, and they like to see this kind of, like, uh, these two introverts very, like, hitting it on and just getting on very well. And that, that, I think that's the way I'd, I'd put it. That's the way I'd see it. I do not disagree, I think. I think there's also just Twilight and Flash is based on lack of uh, spatial awareness as they keep bumping into each other. <laughs> these, these two actually find, seem to find a similar chord. They're both shy, quiet, and can have a whole conversation with two words. Yeah, well, Flash and Twilight, they are more like... The, their romance, their relationship, their their chemistry kind of like is created through a... Uh, we need to move the plot. We have a, it's a plot contrivance. It's a it's a script a screenplay contrivance. This feels a lot more natural, and it's adorable to see these two guys interacting together. They so, they are saying so much by just going, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. It's like you can you can see what they are thinking as they are just inter interchanging mm-hmm, and yups. Oh wow. I, I don't know. I mean, for me, I don't know why, but I, I think what James said it was well, kind of there. Like, it's true. It was a week after, I won't say a week, but it was after season three, the corn status, and then suddenly she's a human and got a boyfriend. And that canon was kind of, well, solid and solidified. And yeah, I, I don't know how to say it other than people did not like that ship. And I don't know why, but it could be because the lack of characteristics for Big Mac because during the time we know him to be well, a caring brother strong, silent type and yeah, and since these two were really adorable together I think I will want to talk about that ship being canon when we talk about the season finale because the season finale they very much disprove that anything Equestria Girls related is canon um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I will. I will tell you. I, I I will tell you how and why I say this when we reach to that to that bridge. But All right. for now, let's let's talk about the, the let's talk about what the uh, how the interactions are with. No, wait a minute. Not not about that. Because yeah, you po the, you posted that question, Silver. What are your thoughts on the on on the question that you just posted? That why are people so angry about Twilight and Flash, but they accept uh, Marvel Max so easily? Well. A lot of the, my answers would be similar to your own. That, that Twilight was going through an awkward transition in the fandom's eyes, and this was too much too fast. 
It was pairing Twilight with a personality that really didn't seem to match her. Flash was your typical cool boyfriend. Uh, and Twilight has never seemed to be one to just fall for looks. But I think a big part of it is, I don't know if I'm going to trigger people by saying this, a lot of folks assumed Big Macintosh was homosexual simply because he wasn't lusting after every mayor in town. Really? Which I, which I always found very frustrating. That because he's yeah. not making a move, he must be gay. Now, if you... Oh, yes? I mean, really? I, I don't see that at all. What no, evidence? It, it, it is true. It, it is no, true. Okay. I saw that at the beginning of the series. At the begin When the fandom was starting, everybody was shipping Big Mac with Sorin, with Braeburn, with, with everyone except the mayors. And it took a while until they, they started to put to pair him up I mean, with... Uh, that that with is just others. artists online. You do know that artists online are just crazy right like they like to shit hey norman like, come on we like to be called mr crazies okay you know artists online are mr crazies right and mrs crazies so they like to ship everything and anything like have you seen the frozen fandom with their ship oh my sure goodness uh, no, so the but, frozen fandom shipping elsa with jack frost but a lot of people did run with this assumption and if you like the idea of these characters being homosexual be more power to you i'm not saying you you shouldn't but I think it's kind of disrespectful to say, "Oh, he must be gay if he's not if he's not hitting on every mayor." It, that's yeah, uh, that's a terrible assumption to make, and it's not respectful to either party. That's basically so, equating introvert introvert uh, being an introvert with being gay, which is a completely rubbish. Hmm, I mean, in terms of characteristics, we always knew that Big Mac was just hardworking, and he has no time to look for mate, male or female. So this here, being forced to work as a team, eh, is pretty cool. Really what he should look for is the uh, is that rock that Granny Smith was talking about with the oh, parents. Oh, yeah, that, that was cool. That was a cool conversation setting. The parents talk, but meanwhile, I think Cadence is off to the side shaking her hoof. That's my job! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it could be Cadence's rock. Like, I'm too lazy. Okay, rock, you do my work. I have no role in this show other than to look pretty and, and give birth to the next generation of merchandising. Rock, you take Somebody the heavy lifting. Somebody buy my toys! Merchandising, buy my merchandising. Toys. Merchandising, merchandising. Yes, I, yes I'm better. I, but anyway. I, I still want to buy a Princess Cadence toy. Honestly, the conversation the Elder Pies and the Elder Apples are having are really cool. I just like what Granny Smith is saying, like... um. Is that rock still around now? Can I have a mate? <laughs> well, who knows how long it's been since Grandpa Apple passed away. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe he's off on vacation with Applejack's parents, and we're just going to get a very rude surprise. Oh, well, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's... It, it is it is very neat, though. Uh, this is the part where I really started to 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 feel for the, the pie parents. Because they're really neat. I really like how they speak, and they are very gentle. Like, I love these guys. I thought I was gonna hate these two guys, but no, I love them. I, I want to see more of them. Pinkie Pie's family is the best. I want to see more of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, after that, we, we get interaction between, um, Apple Bloom Apple and, and Mod. Mod. And, uh, like always, Mod is like there is no, uh, waste with Mod. She's uh, perfect. <laughs> we get to see them interacting like Apple Bloom is finally getting her. She is, Understanding the mod. It's hard to understand. Like, that's cool. We're very similar about having dreams to turn into things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah, and the final interaction, mm. Applejack and Pinkie Pie. Uh, what can we say? Well, Applejack, uh. Applejack's classic stubbornness shows when they find out the rock they're supposed to find is a drawing. Which actually makes a lot of sense. How on earth are you supposed to tell one rock from the millions of others? No, here's the thing. Like, they were not instructions. What were they? Yeah. Well, f find the find the rock, but you have a pie with every apple, so they know what to look for. Uh... Yeah, they are not going to be lost. Besides, Applejack is not like she asked, but... This is the part of the episode where Applejack is starting to get ticked off about 
these traditions that are so weird. It's like, oh, what's going on? This, you're looking for rocks, but you're looking for a drawing, and ah, and you have no presents. Nobody finds presents. No, no, ah. no. They have presents, but nobody finds them because it's a scavenger hunt, which is pretty cool. So, oh yes, and they never really, and they go whole years without ever finding a present. Ah. Uh... Well, here's the thing. Pinky, actually, that speaks very highly of Pinky. She's never worried about not getting a present. She just enjoys the search. And I have no idea what the other pies enjoy. They just sort of do. Well, if your present is a rock, like, I ain't missing a thing. No, either way. I mean, the next morning, when Pinky's lying in bed, and the minute she wakes up, that is pure joy on her face. <laughs> Uh, that is that is joy personified, pony sonified, if you will. True. Oh, before that, we know we we now know that Big Mac likes to take the top bunk. Well, Big Brother privilege. <laughs> True, but come on, look at how heavy he is. <laughs> well, that's Big Mac has a history of underestimating the fragility of the world around him. Oh, uh, yeah. yes, he does. But, we have an entire episode dedicated to it. Yeah. But honestly speaking, I do enjoy the comedy that the writers and artists are doing with this one because they didn't have to do that, you know. Like in storytelling, it made no difference if who's up or who's down. They just did it just for the lulls. Well, I don't actually. One could argue it does matter. Every little act is a little bit of characterization. Yeah, true, but what like what I'm saying, it it doesn't move the scene on. Like they could just have put. Apple Blue at the top and the scene would have just been the same with less comedy. Like that little detail that the cartoonist does or the artist do in this show makes the whole show even better. Now meanwhile, the three Pi sisters are all sharing a bed, which speaks, that says something about the uh, Pi's generosity, that they, they're willing to have three sisters share one bed while the apples get their own bunks. I, I want to say, have you not slept with your brothers and sisters like this when you were younger, but yeah, I don't know. My brother and I had bunk beds. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Let me guess your top bunk? Nope. Older brother top bunk. Oh, okay. But yeah, Pinkie Pie is just engaging in joy, and Applejack is engaging in house vandalization. <laughs> because uh... he, here's the thing. Applejack's acting like these folks have it backwards, that because they're not doing all the fun stuff she's familiar with, something's wrong, and she's trying to fix it. Now... Party foul, you do not decorate your, your host's home without their permission. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's just That's a bad, bad. one. Very bad. But let's also acknowledge, up until this point, they've been doing the pie tradition, requiring that each of the apples adapt to their ways, which is really the same faux pas. But honestly speaking, it's... I don't know how to defend this one, but honestly speaking... When you're invited to the host's family, you follow the host's rules. And host rules are, well, hearts moving if it's celebrated this way, so follow. But is that really being a good host to demand that you abandon your own traditions just because you're, you made the journey to see our home? Well, I what? will make the argument that they never get, uh, they never force them to follow their traditions. They just, they, they never ask. The Apple family never asks. They just try to follow on what they are doing and slowly they are starting to get more into it until Applejack decides that this is an office and all and she wants to put her traditions on the line. And that's where the whole conflict comes through. That's, that's where you have the, uh, the, the clash. Like some, and every Christmas movie that exists has dealt with this kind of thing. Because every but, Christmas movie is about conflict. It's about, uh, Two opposing forces trying to find a middle ground, and sometimes it's found, and other times it's not. Like the unstoppable seriously. force meets the immovable object. <laughs> uh, well, you could say that because Applejack is very much an unstoppable force, and the Pie family is very much, by the nature of the the, the rock farm, they are an immovable immovable object. But while usually those stories send in destruction and and, and terribleness. This one is, should end by the nature of the show on on a middle ground on on an understanding. But this is this is the part of the episode where you have the conflict, where like, oh, damn, we have a problem now. 
I will say they're being inflexible though, because instead of uh, going with the aw- even that awkward smile and nod as Applejack was doing the day before, uh, El- the elder Pi, the father, is instantly like, "What is this t- abomination?" Ma, get my torch. <laughs> well, I think that maybe it's because of the sudden change. Like this is going from uh, kind of like um, dire looking. A celebration where you don't have decorations, you don't have candy canes or Christmas lights or any of that. You don't have any of that to the most gaudy esque, super bright. We're going to completely change this. This is the other extreme. And, and the Pie family finds this out by the end of the episode. You cannot have just rock soup and rock dolls and, but you cannot have bright colors and mistletoe all over the place with bows and candy canes. That is, it's, it's ridiculous. And at the end of the episode, they come to a middle ground where they are having those uh, those cinnamon buns, but they are also having the the, the the rock dolls and they are just enjoying enjoying what the best part of each one's festivities. Uh, but I do want to point out, they have been in this situation before when they entered their barn and a certain pink pony had put together a party. And recall, they were not half so outraged. Now, granted, that's their daughter. But it's kind of funny. Just thinking back to season one, they've really amped up the uh, the rigidity for this family. Uh, Grant, that you also have to remember that that was an isolated location. This is, uh, well, technically the whole holiday. So it's like Pinkie Pie party up the silo. And Applejack party up the whole house without permission. Which one? She partied up the whole front yard. Really? I thought it was a silo. What? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Applejack partied about... up the front yard. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, yeah, a yeah. larger space, no. but it's still isolated. Well, still, it's something visible. You just reminded me of uh, that clip in Ponies the Anthology Three, where the uh, the Pie family finds out the party in the silo, and then it cuts it cuts to them <laughs> trying to set. Pinkie Pie on fire. She's a witch! Burn her! Burn the witch! Oh, no. So, uh, but, no, I think, I think maybe they, I don't think that they amped the, the rigidity of it, like you said it, but, uh, I think that Pinkie's party, first, how did she manage to get all of those party supplies overnight without, in a, in a place that basically has no baking powder for all you know, but it, it wasn't perhaps not as over the top as, uh, what Applejack has set up here because she went over the top. Like, not even t- Times Square has that many lights. It's ri- it- it's ridiculous. And maybe it's because, uh, like, the, uh, as years pass, you become a bit more uh, rooted to your traditions. So that was perhaps that was back then when they were still Phillies, when they were still young. Now that they are older, they don't want to break with their traditions. And this is kind of like... Again, we have that culture class going on here. So it's like, this is too much. This is going too far. Either way, we're, we're getting hung up on this. I still maintain that the pies could learn a little bit of flexibility from this. And thankfully they shall after they are this royal at Holder's Boulder taking the fall. And the, fa- yeah. and the <laughs> fault lies with Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love, I love the way that mod says it. Excuse me, but you kind of put this pole in a fault line. It's hilarious. Love the delivery. And yeah, that, that's enough proof that they, they have to get out of the farm. And so they leave. Oh, but not before a very touching scene. You see Applejack having a good cry. So never mind that Applejack cries on the inside stuff, but it's bad. She cries on her own. Mm-hmm. And that's bad. Very bad. And then, Once they talk it out, they go, well, they head home, which is sad. (sighs) Yeah, and that's where Granny Smith tells the story of uh, Holder's Boulder and what it it signifies uh, to the Pie family. And as they are going on the train, Applejack gets knocked out and gets hit by her first heartwarming present. Which is a rock. (laughs) To her, how her skull did not collapse is a testament to Apple. Uh, resilience. Ponies are made out of black matter. Well, well, if if ever there was proof that Applejack is a bit hard headed, <laughs> uh, oh, yes. 
she, she, well, she's an earth pony. I'm pretty sure that she can, she can handle, handle that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I'm still, I'm not ready to assign every earth pony the ability to crush rocks with their bare hooves. I still feel like that's a, at least a, a, a pie family trait. Yeah. <laughs> but she could be a pie. She could be. Who knows anymore? <laughs> Talk about uh, being stubborn and thick headed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. If, if they do have a shared ancestry, it's got to be the pony version of Hercules. That is the only explanation I can think of. <laughs> oh, it could be an alien pony from the planet of Krypton. Oh, there you go. <laughs> if they ever find a green rock, they're in trouble. Oh, no. Or maybe a red rock. Oh, Lord, if Ma discovered red kryptonite. Oh, pink one. Hmm. Anyway, uh, and once again, Maud brings the great humor as they're all shoving. I'm pushing too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm pushing as hard as I can. I love that she keeps her, her same face, but her, her, her legs and hooves are shaking. So yeah, she is pushing hard, but <laughs> I'm pushing as hard as I can. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah she's so funny. Everybody in the pipeline is pushing really, really hard and hey, Apple family comes to help to save the day or give a Brief explanation saying it's my fault and uh, we shouldn't have done this in the first place, blah, blah, blah. No, let us help. So, blah, 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 blah. They all roll up and then we get the nice epilogue of, uh, you know, Big Mac and, and Marvel are making eyes at each other or mm-hmm. looking away from one another. Mm-hmm. They share the, they put the dolls on the chimney. Uh, no, I think it's the, that silk? No, what was it called? The, the sta- no, the statues, the the rock statues. They put them on the. It's not on the chimney. It, on the, it's called. Steel, yeah, on top of the chimney, right? Steel stuff. What's it called? Silver. Like, no, they put them. They put them on top of the of the chimney, on top of the hearth. Yeah, it's above the hearth. It's it's really just a shelf. Yeah, shelf. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, shelf. So anyway, yeah, Apple Bloom and Mora talking, and uh, <laughs> Apple Bloom is discovering Boulder. Yeah. I still want to see what happened to that sandwich that Mod gave to Boulder because that sandwich disappeared. Boulder ate the sandwich in in season four. All the crackers in Equestria Girls. Don't forget that, like eating crackers, like what? what? <laughs> Pie family is just strange in any dimension. In any and every dimension, indeed. And yet, awesome. Mm-hmm. And then we got <laughs> ship. We got ship intensify. Mm. Big Mac only agreed to come back because ships. There was a fun comic that came out. Uh, Big Mac and and Marvel are now married, and someone's asking, "So, where did you two meet? At a family reunion?" <laughs> <laughs> and they and they are just outside a trailer, dressed up with t-shirts and caps, and looking <laughs> the part of you know. Ah, uh, of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the team O, I love team O's interaction here, as they try to talk. Like one another. Yeah. <laughs> See, the pies are learning some flexibility. Yeah, this is fun. This this is a fun episode. And we got... What is the best way to end the episode? With a rock poem. Yeah. They, this they first one is about, about rock. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She's the best. I love Mom. I would love to see Mod's playlist on her um, Apple device. Oh, it's all rock. Yeah, rock yeah, that means it's silent. It's the sound of rocks. Hell, it even comes down to the uh, to the last shot of the episode when you see the uh, that Holder's boulder has been held together by a bunch of candy canes, <laughs> which is yeah. That even even in the visual, even in the the, the decoration, it's it's found a middle ground. And there you go. Actually, were those were those glowing crystals there at the beginning? I need to scroll. Yes, the yes, gallery. they were. They were. Yeah, the, okay. the glowing crystals they were at the beginning of the episode. I, I noticed that too. I was like, oh, I, they have glowing crystals. I didn't notice that. Which is pretty neat. Makes sense. All right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good festive time. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> with, with that episode <laughs> ends. So what, what can we talk about more? Like what have we not talked no, about? Let's, let's give our, let's give our final thoughts final on thoughts, it. Let's eh? see what, right. okay, okay, I, you know what? Because this season we have had a lot of frame of references when it comes to, uh, uh, new celebrations. We had ni- a repeat of Nightmare Night, a repeat of the Grand Galloping Gala, and a repeat of Hearts Warming Eve. Now, I think that both, uh, the Grand Galloping Gala and Nightmare Night, they were represented better in this season than in the previous seasons. Um, 
so what would you guys say about about this celebration in particular? Do you think this episode is better than the previous heartwarming episode that we had or is it in the same level or worse? I think it's more personal. The the first one was a description of the whole holiday and the theme of not being racist, which is nice. This one is more individual family interaction, which really is what we emphasize during the the Christmas holiday season. I enjoyed this more. Plus, it also involved the characters rather than historical fictional characters that they were representing. Honestly, for me and on my end, it feel it comes to um, context because the first heartwarming Eve episode was about the whole tradition. It's like when you go watch a play done by ten year olds about uh, what's that play called again? Silver? I don't know what it's called. I'm not American. Oh, what the nativity? Yeah, that one. Okay, so you got that done by ten year olds. So I played tree number three. <laughs> Get it? So yeah, I, I did that. Now. That's fun and all, but it's a play, so context does matter. This one on this episode is more about personal family interaction. So Silver loves this episode because of that, and I love it because of that too. But for me to compare which one's better, it's kind of comparing the same thing but different locations. Like a Ferrari would be awesome uh, anywhere, but on my road with how bumpy and how... We have a lot of speed bumps. It's going to be destroyed in a few hours. So, yeah. <laughs> I think this episode is definitely a much more, uh, a, a much more reduced version. It's like a miniaturized version of Hearts Warming If because you do have the conflict and it's funny. You do have the conflict, but they are all earth ponies. So they are not, um, there's, there's no other, I, I could call this episode Earth Ponies the episode. And I love that because it's very, very, uh, a small, like small scale, is scale down, and it is, it's very enjoyable. Anything that reminds me of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is okay on my book. In my opinion, one of the best holiday movies ever made. Uh, love the conflict, love the relationship between the characters. Um, not involving in the shipping, of course. I, I don't ship Marvel and Big Mac, but that's just me. Uh, I. I think it's very good, and I could watch it any day of the any day of the week. So Love you it. don't I ship Marvel think... and Big Mac. Burn the heretic! No, no, Burn. I don't. Uh, Burn. 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 I am very conservative when it comes to my shipping. It's like I ship couples that are already married. <laughs> so I ship Shining with Cadence and Mister Mister Cake with Mrs. Cake. Like, yeah. And Burn Twilight Sparks, let's not forget about them. Oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> what about love and tolerance? <laughs> yeah, we we'll love and tolerance. We we'll love and tolerate our opinion on you. <laughs> that was just the poor <laughs> chat. It's really every brody for themselves. <laughs> oh, wow, that's dark. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, final thoughts, guys. Final dark thoughts. Silver. The, the, dark Silver. We already gave our final really? thoughts. Really? I thought that was more on moment. comparing episodes. No, I think... We we were doing final thoughts, weren't we? We well, we were. It did become a comparison between which which holiday episode we like better. Obviously, I favor this one, and it's just fun. It's love. It's every character gets a chance to shine, even the quiet ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's the whole family dynamics are great. Pairing off the the characters into different uh into different groups worked so well. And there's that right mixture of humor, slapstick, and even a little bit of heartfelt. I felt bad for both Applejack and Pinky as they cried. Which I should. When a character's crying, you want to feel bad for them if you're saying, oh, you got what you deserved. Well, we've got a problem. And, well, I don't know. I mean, for this episode overall, the character interaction, the character screen time, the bond between family and friends and even potential family members is really fun. For, for a holiday episode, this really hits the spot in terms of um family because well you have new fa- you, you have new connections going on you have um limestone and big mac you have mod and apple bloom and you have the pa and ma pie with granny smith talking together they're, they're talking and they're interacting and with crazy pony she's just crazy like stay away from her and 
Apple, Jack and Pinkie Pie getting closer together because of this holiday. So, yay. So, anyway, James, next week, what are we going to do, man? Oh, my gosh. Well, to keep on the holiday spirit, and because it's still Christmas uh, over here, we are going to be talking about the 2014 annual that uh, came out last year. Duh. Uh, that uh, is about uh, Equestria Girls, and we're going to talk about that comic uh, that was written by Ted Anderson, if I recall correctly. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, as a double whammy review, we're also going to be talking about the 2015 annual that came out this year, which is written by Katie Cook and drawn by everyone else. Yay! Like, literally, there is like four artists in that comic. This, everybody decided to put their hands on it and do a, a couple of pictures for it. It's amazing. Oh my. Not just Katie Cook drew it, but Agnes Garabowska, Brenda Hickey, Katie, mm-hmm. uh, like, Andy, uh, like I said, Katie Cook, Andy Price. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure Heather Breckel had a nightmare. Oh, it's she had fun. That whole thing. She had fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fun episode, fun. It's just fun all over the place. Like, oh, that was, oh, you can tell me how, you, you can surely tell how I much, how much I love that book. But anyway, uh, let's end this so we can talk about that one. Yeah, let's do this. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy everything. Hope you guys are having fun. And we'll see you all on the next MBS show. Let us know what you think of the episode in the comments, please. We read all the comments. We love it. You guys are the best. So, until next time, this has been James Cork. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> you guys are going to kill me. <laughs>